It's here! Oh my god, I'm so excited. So this is a snake that I've been waiting on getting in, and I, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I love blood and short tail pythons. Should I do, should I do the Brian Bart trick? Oh. I mean, of course. Have it. Oh yeah. There we go. So just open it right up, get rid of that, get rid of this. Oh! There we go. So this is a Borneo short tail python in here. I'm super, super excited about it. And so whenever I get in a new blood or short tail, you always want to make sure that you're nice and gentle when you're taking them out of the bag because the shipping process can be really stressful on them. Most people, almost everyone, does priority overnight shipping. So this animal gets jostled around from wherever it's coming from to all the way to you. So it can be very traumatic on these animals and they will remember that sort of thing. So you always want to be nice and slow when you're opening up your bags or opening up the deli containers that the new blood or short tail is in. Let's take a look at this little Borneo. I'm super, super pumped about this. Nice and tied up in there. So this is a little Borneo short tail python. And Borneo short tail pythons are really closely related to blood pythons where they're actually a different species. Um, so like the difference between a Burmese python and a reticulated python, that's how different they are from a blood python. But they have very similar care requirements and they have very similar body shape, but I just absolutely love the Borneos. They are super, super cool. Check out that little face. So, when you get a new snake in, you always want to do a nice thorough inspection to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the animal. So you always want to make sure that you look at the face, check them out. I usually like to look up underneath their chin. They've got that little uh, fold of skin underneath there. I like to inspect that. If there's anything like mites or anything like that, sometimes you'll be able to see them in there. Uh, you always want to make sure their eyes are nice and clear, uh, unless they are, of course, in shed. I usually check their belly, make sure there's no uh, signs of anything like scale rot or anything like that. Check the vent. The cloaca down there, and it looks like this snake is absolutely perfect. All right, so this little Borneo right here has been set up to soak for a little bit, so I'm just gonna take it out right now, but you can take a look inside of this container. You can see it's not super deep water. I try and keep it right around room temperature, not too hot. If it feels hot or warm to you, it's probably gonna be super, super hot for a reptile because you gotta figure our bodies are usually running at about 98 degrees. So for a reptile, that's ambient temperature is probably around 82 degrees. That's really, really hot. So you don't wanna keep your water hot inside of the soak. You want it to make sure it's like, uh, Basically, room temp uh, is what you're gunning for. But after this animal's had a chance to soak, I'll take them out, do another quick inspection just to look over them, make sure that everything's cool. I usually leave them to soak for about a half hour to an hour so that they can hydrate themselves, and then I'll set them up in their enclosure that they're going to be spending their time in. Bloods and short-tailed pythons are a very insecure snake. So when I'm setting up an enclosure for these guys, I usually like to go a little bit on the smaller side as opposed to going bigger. Uh, if you take a small short tail like this and you were to set it up in say a 32 quart box, it probably is not going to eat. Or something like a 20 gallon enclosure, it's probably not going to eat. When these snakes are eating, their mouth, their only real form of self-defense, is immobilized. So if they feel like they can't be safe while they're eating, they'll choose safety over food all the time. So they generally uh, don't want to be placed in a situation where they feel insecure. So bloods and short tails in particular, I usually go with, uh, for hatchlings and smaller animals, I'll go with a six quart shoebox size. I use newspaper on the bottom. You can also go with substrate. Um, and then I'll take a bunch of crumpled newspaper, and put that in here so that they can go underneath it. So it basically makes it like they're sitting underneath leaf litter. And when they go in there, pretty much just gonna check it all out. And then they'll find a comfortable spot and they'll hang out right in there. I, used, I like to give them a nice big water dish because bloods and short tails love to stay hydrated uh, and they do like a decent amount of humidity inside of the enclosure. I go with a little bit of a bigger water dish so that they can stay nice and well hydrated. Change that out twice a week. And for the first week when you get your new blood or short tail in, I like to leave them alone. I don't like to touch them at all. I don't like to handle them unless they go to the bathroom or make a mess of their enclosure. I will make an exception for that. But as far as casual handling goes, I don't touch these animals for at least seven to 10 days when I get a new blood or short tail in of any size. Uh, it's especially important for the babies because they're in a completely new surrounding. Um, they might not have been, uh, you know, as established at whatever place you got them from. So you want to make sure that they establish and get comfortable in the environment that you have them set up in. So it's very important that when you get in a new blood or short tail, you let it acclimate before you handle it, before you work with it too much. Uh, you want that animal to start eating well. And once they're eating, they're usually, they don't stop. Okay. 
And um, the, did you say the very last piece? Or did you say when you how long you wait to offer this for a female? No, I didn't say that. I, I can do that too. All right. Let me. Let, I'll do that section over again. Okay. I, I think you. I think you did just fine. To be honest with you, man. Um, okay. Good. So, when you get your new blood or short tail in, I try not to handle them too much for the first seven to 10 days. Bloods and short tails are a very insecure snake, so I tend to want to set them up in a smaller enclosure. This enclosure right here is what I use for most babies. It's a six quart shoebox size tub. I do newspaper for the bottom, and then I put some crumpled newspaper in on top of the other newspaper in there. Makes it feel like a bunch of leaf litter that they would be able to hide under. You can also use substrate for them, but just know they do pee quite a bit, so you'll have to change out that substrate on a fairly regular basis. I also go with a little bit of a bigger water dish because Bloods and Short Tails love to stay well hydrated. They don't like a lot of humidity in the enclosure, but they do like to drink a lot of water. So you wanna change that out twice a week. And then for the first meal, I don't offer my new blood or short tail a meal until it's been with me for at least seven to 10 days. I usually wait two weeks to be sure, unless it's a fresh baby. If it's a really young baby, I'll feed it after, I'll offer food after a week. Um, if it's anything else, I'll wait two weeks just so that they can be really well acclimated. They can be adjusted to the temperatures and the style enclosure that you've got them in. Uh, bloods and short tails are kind of like a camel in a way where they, they have that thick body reserves so they don't need to eat quite as much as say a colubrid like a corn snake or a rat snake. They can go much longer periods of time uh, with less food because they've got that thick body to sustain them. Okay, all right. You gonna show me your other? So a really common thing with blood pythons is people overfeeding them. Blood pythons are not supposed to be a round snake. A lot of people talk about blood pythons as being really fat and having rolls when really they're not supposed to. On a healthy blood python like this guy right here, you're supposed to be able to see a little bit of that back ridge, the ridge of along their spine. If you cannot see that ridge, it usually means that your blood python is too fat. So you should slow down in your feedings. You kind of have to feed them according to the animal's metabolism because blood pythons have a very sedentary lifestyle and they are an animal that kind of is an ambush predator. They don't burn a whole lot of calories. So when they're babies, I feed them once a week to once every 10 days. Once they get to this size, I'll start feeding them once every two to three weeks and I'll remain that for the rest of their life. This guy, this guy right here is eating medium size or large size rats every feeding, once every feeding. And I only feed them like maybe once every three weeks, so almost once a month. Whoa, we're going to do some lift, weight, weight lifting. Ah, yeah, get those curls in. Mm, work those biceps. Ah, yeah. So one of the main draws for blood pythons is having a snake that feels like a big snake without needing a giant enclosure. This is an adult blood python right here, and this girl's probably about five and a half foot long. And you can see she's probably about the same thickness as uh, maybe a 12 foot long berm, but in a much smaller package. So blood pythons really got that advantage where you can have a snake that feels like a big snake without needing a 10 or 12 or longer foot cage. Huge, menacing, Huge, venomous. Giant out for blood python. That's a good one. Ooh, he's zooming. It's holding the middle. You can't, I mean, if she were to panic, <laughs> I would do that. But literally, they just want to be supported, dude. Blood pythons, the number one thing with them is to support their body weight. So what I'm trying to do right now is support the back half of her and the middle part. I'm going to kind of let her head do whatever she wants to do. The closer you get to the head, the more they feel like you're going to try and secure them, like uh, restrain them and maybe potentially kill them, which they don't want. So that's when you'll really see them panic. If you kind of don't restrain them, you let them kind of do their thing and you just support their body weight, they calm right down. All right, so for an adult blood python like this, uh, most people will keep them in something that's roughly four foot long by about two foot wide and maybe 12 to 18 inches tall. The height isn't quite as important for blood pythons since they are a more sedentary animal. They don't typically climb all that much um, and they're kind of very clumsy if they do try to climb. So we usually try to keep them in a little bit of a shorter cage. For a really big girl like this, you might even go a little bit bigger, but most people are sitting right around that uh, four, three to four foot long enclosure for a good size adult blood python. 
So, if you like this video, make sure that you smash that like button, subscribe to the New England Reptile channel, turn on your post notifications so you next, you'll know the next time that we put out a really cool video, and make sure that you check us out on twitch.tv slash New England Reptile. This has been Weightlifting Snakes with Rob. Get swole. Get swole. Yeah. Nice. <laughs>